Welcome to Morency, Michigan, a small town of about 3,000 souls, 75 miles southwest of Detroit, and a stone's throw away from the Ohio border. Home to the Rex Theater, the State Line Gem and Mineral Society, and the Morency Fighting Bulldogs. This place is small town America at its very best, according to former police chief Larry Weeks. This is a typical small town rural community. Everyone knows everyone. It's just a great small town, a great place to raise a family. It's just a great place to live. But in 2010, this sleepy hamlet was the center of a tragedy that remains shrouded in mystery to this day. On Thanksgiving, the Skelton brothers, Andrew, age nine, seven-year-old Alexander and Tanner, five, went for a regularly scheduled visit with their dad and were never seen again. We had plans to meet and I would get the boys back at three o'clock. And about mid-morning, um, I thought, you know, if he's home, not doing anything, I'll see if I can get the boys early. That's Tanya Zuvers, the boy's mom. I called him and he started with the stories. Well, we went away, we're in Jackson. I'll see if we can make it home. His van was in the driveway. I said, your van's in the driveway, huh? Well, they came and picked us up because we didn't know where we were going. And at this point, I had no reason not to believe him. But each time I talked with him or texted with him, there was another twist. Something just wasn't setting right, and I'm going, ah. Oh. And then he finally said to me, well, I haven't been quite honest with you. I'm actually at home, and the boys are with my friend. That friend was someone he said he met on the internet. Her name, Joanne Taylor. So I asked him, well, when your friend brings the boys home, are they bringing them to your house or my house? Well, I'm not sure. I said, well, how can I get a hold of her? Because if she's coming from Jackson, I can meet her somewhere. And then John dropped a bomb. He told her he was calling from the hospital. Skelton claimed he tried to hang himself. Tanya's worry turned to dread. I, yeah, I was starting to get a little panicky. I had gone to the house that the boys and I were living in because it was only a few blocks from his in case this woman showed up at my house. Joanne Taylor never showed up. Chief Weeks got the call. Tell me about that Thanksgiving day. I was at home with my family. I had about 15 people in my house, I believe it was, for Thanksgiving holiday. Um, my phone rang uh, in the afternoon. Uh, officer had called me, briefed me on what was happening that uh, Mr. Skelton was in the hospital and that his three sons were missing. It became abundantly clear to us there was much more going on there than just kids with a family member. Chief Weeks got right down to business. First step, an Amber Alert. They searched John's house. When they went into the house, there was broken dishes, things just thrown about, furniture broken, mattresses cut with a knife, dressers busted. I mean, there was just destruction everywhere. But frighteningly, there was no sign of the boys, and no one had any idea where they could be. A massive search effort was about to spin up with just one thing in mind, find the Skelton brothers. In Marincy, Michigan, the three young Skelton brothers had started their Thanksgiving, visiting with their dad, John Skelton. Later that day, Tanya, their mom, called John about getting the boys back a bit early, but something was wrong. Something just wasn't setting right, and I'm going, ah. Oh. And then he finally said to me, well, I haven't been quite honest with you. I'm actually at home, and the boys are with my friend. That friend, Joanne Taylor, was someone John met on the internet, but this Joanne never returned with the boys. When they spoke again, John shocked Tanya with the revelation he was calling from the hospital. He had tried to hang himself, Tanya's concern turned to dread. I, yeah, I was starting to get a little panicky. The cops were called. They searched Skelton's home, a search that yielded chilling results. There was broken dishes, things just thrown about, furniture broken, mattresses cut with a knife, dressers busted. I mean, there was just destruction everywhere. But the boys weren't there. A huge search effort spun up, and the hunt was on. The citizens of Morency stepped up to help a neighbor in desperate need. 
initially people just began to search on their own walking through the parks and we covered a significant area in a fairly short period of time. We did our best to cover as many public roadways, public parks, public access areas. And I'm very proud of the work that those folks did. Why on earth would any father make his own children vanish? Tanya, who was divorcing John at the time of the kid's disappearance, thinks she knows. He had gone through a previous divorce, and there was a custody battle, and his ex-wife gained custody, and he had visitation rights. She lived in another state, and so he rarely saw his daughter. And I think that was the biggest thing that he was afraid of, that he was going to lose his sons. John was arrested and charged with three counts of parental kidnapping and three counts of unlawful imprisonment. All that and still no sign of the three boys. And just like that, things in this little town changed. Not only are the boys gone, but a sense of innocence in this town was too. Chief Weeks was surprised at what he heard during a grade school visit. Uh, one young lady raised her hand in, uh, in the fifth grade class and she goes, do you handle many investigations where parents steal their children? And uh, as that fifth grade girl sat there and asked that question, it was much like a knife being jabbed into my heart. Even as Skelton sat behind bars, Tanya's divorce proceeded. John was lawyered up, but his attorney was not wearing a suit and tie. John chose to represent himself in this divorce. And in a bizarre twist, actually questioned Tanya on the witness stand about himself. How do you know that your husband knows where the kids are at? Has he voiced any that he knows where the kids are? Or has he always stated from day one that uh, he has? This is not your opportunity to testify. The question is, do you believe that your husband knows where the children are? Yes, I do. Do you believe the children are safe? No, because they're not really your parent. During your divorce trial, when he questioned you, <laughs> you wouldn't look at him. You would not look him in the eye. Nope. Why not? You betrayed me and hurt me worse than if someone stabbed me in the heart. As Skelton headed to his criminal trial for the kidnapping charges, his story changed and got even stranger. Remember Joanne Taylor, the woman John Skelton says he'd given the boys to? Well, cops searched hard for her. She simply doesn't exist. Skelton claimed he'd given the boys to a group called United Foster Outreach and Underground Sanctuaries to protect them from their abusive mother. No such group was ever identified. Skelton ended up pleading no contest to the unlawful imprisonment charges and was slapped hard with a 10 to 15 year sentence. But even with Skelton locked up tight, this man is making sure the case does not go cold. Since the, uh, the beginning of the case, we've taken over 1,500 tips, and these are tips from all over the country. Michigan State Police Detective Sergeant Jeremy Brewer has been driven to solve this mystery for two years now and will not give up until the boys are back home. He's gotten to know Tanya and the family as a close friend. The 15-year police vet is deeply invested in this one. In law enforcement, we get a lot of cues. We're trained to be observant. We're trained to read body language. We're trained to do a lot of things um, to the point where, you know, the hairs on your neck will stand up and you get this gut feeling of something's not right here. And, um, Sometimes you might work a full eight hour shift and only feel that once or twice. Um, but with him, it's like that from the second I walk in that door to the, to the moment I leave. It's a tough investigation that so far has only paid off in dead ends and frustration. Did you ever wonder why me? Why did I get assigned to this case? You know, I firmly believe that things happen for a reason. Um, you know, one of the boys has the same name as, as my son and, uh, and same age. And so it's, um, Sergeant Brewer does have one new tool available to him. The Center for Missing and Exploited Children has produced age progressed pictures to show how the boys might look now. Who knows if that's what they truly do look like. 
we have hope. We don't give up hope every day that um, we will be able to bring closure to the family um, and find these boys. And um, we'll take any investigative help we can we can get. As Sergeant Brewer continues to tackle this investigation, backpack-toting kids tromp past Tanya's home on their way to the Marinci Elementary School just up the street. Sometimes it hurts to see how life just goes on. As they pass, Tanya and daughter Courtney raise two flags, one with the stars and stripes, and one bearing the faces of Andrew, Alexander, and Tanner, her babies. I have to keep going. Quitting's not an option. A lot of times when we come out, there'll be various things left for the boys. Uh, they have, uh, you know, toys or coloring books. Sergeant Brewer took me to a park in town where there's a memorial of the Skelton boys. There's a small plaque here, settled in among three newly planted trees that will grow to shade the images of the young brothers as the days, the months, and years pass. What do you want Tanner, Andrew, and Alexander to know? We're fighting for them every day. I know, in my heart, I will see them again. Hope burns bright here in Marinci and the hunt for the Skelton brothers goes on.